matrix matrix multiplication. So let's say we're given two matrices. Um, let's make this a little easy. Let's make this one, 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 one. So let's say we're told that we want to multiply these two matrices. What does that look like? And the way this is going to work is we do the following. We take the first row and we compute its dot product with the first column. Okay. That will give us the top leftmost entry in our new matrix. So one times one times one plus two times one, and that will give us three, right? And so this is the result of first row dotted with first column, okay? We're gonna do the same thing for the first row and the second column. So we're gonna do one times one plus two times one, and that's gonna give us the next entry in our matrix, okay? So you can see that the entry in position one one of the matrix is the first row dotted with the first column. The entry in position one two in the matrix is the first row dotted with the second column, okay? And so you can guess the entry in position two one is gonna be the second row dotted with the first column. In other words, three plus one, three times one plus four times one, which is seven, right? And down here, the entry in position two by two of the matrix will be the second row dotted with the second column. So three times one plus four times one, or seven again. Cool. So long story short, uh, entry, let's say n comma m in new matrix is nth row dotted with the nth column. Okay, so it's kind of worth it to ask, like, uh, if this is the case, is it possible to multiply any two matrices, right? That's a pretty natural question, because it seems like this uh, formula for multiplication is a little specific, like it requires a lot of things out of us. So we have to think about like what specifically are the requirements. We need to be able to dot every row in the first matrix with every column in the second matrix, which means that the length of each row needs to be the same as the length of each column. So length of rows in matrix one, we'll call that M1 need to equal the length of columns in matrix two, M2. This is actually the same as saying that the number of columns in matrix one is the same as the number of rows in matrix two, right? The length of each row in matrix one is the number of columns in matrix one. And the length of each column in matrix two is the number of rows in matrix two. So if we want to multiply an n by m matrix times, uh, say, a k by q matrix, it needs to be the case that m, the number of columns in the first matrix, equals k, the number of, column, uh, of rows in the second matrix. So these two need to be equal. Otherwise, the dot product is not defined. Okay. And the second thing we want to think about is if we perform this matrix multiplication, what's going to be the size of our outputted matrix? Okay. And so we can see that for each row in the first matrix, we get one entry for every column in the second matrix, right? Each row times each column gives us one entry. So if we look at the dimensions of the new matrix, that's going to be the number of rows in the first matrix by the number of columns in the second matrix, or n by q. Okay, so let's run a sort of example where our matrix is not square. Let's do 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1, 
Okay, so this is a three by two matrix times a two by three matrix. Zero, one, one, two, one, zero, zero. And so let's see what we get out times a two by three. You can see that um, the dimensions of the inner matrix match, which the inner values match here. So we're good. We can perform this multiplication. And you can see that we're, we should get out a three by three matrix. Okay. So we're going to go through this first row dotted with first column. That's going to be one times zero plus two times one or two. First row dotted with the second column, one. First row dotted with third column, one again. Second row, first column, zero. And you're going to see that all the entries in this one will be zero since it's zero, zero here. And finally, third row, first column, it's going to be one. Third row, second column, zero. Third row, second column, zero. Okay. So we've done this multiplication of a three by two matrix times a two by three matrix, and we get out a three by three matrix. Okay. So does matrix multiplication commute? Is A times B going to be equal to B times A? And actually, if you think about the previous example, uh, it kind of makes it immediately obvious what the answer to this is. We said that if you multiply a 3 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 3 matrix, you get out a 3 by 3 matrix. Well, what if we sort of flip these and multiplied the second by the first instead of the first by the second? Then we'd be doing a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2, right? And we said here, you get a 3 by 3 matrix. Well, if we look over here, we've all we've done is we've flipped the order of the multiplication but we're getting a two by two matrix. And so there's definitely no way that these are equal, right? They have different dimensions. Not equal. So we can say as for sure, this is not the case, right? Matrix multiplication does not commute. Cool. And kind of the second thing we want to ask is, can we invert matrix multiplication? Like before we said, look, you can invert matrix addition, you can invert uh, multiplication by scalar. Can you invert multiplication by a matrix? That is, if we have some matrix X and we multiply it by A, we get something like B. If given sort of A and B, can we get back to what X is? Right? We find X given A and B. Or in other words, is there some A inverse such that A inverse times A equals, oops, times X equals B. Okay. And so to sort of get to this answer, uh, one thing we want to investigate first is what we call the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is the matrix with the property that any matrix multiplied by it or multiplying it by any matrix gives you the other matrix. Okay, and so the identity matrix is going to look as follows. It's going to have ones down its diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So it's always a square matrix, something like this, or for a two by two, something like this. Okay. We can think of the identity matrix identity, as being kind of analogous to multiplying by one with scalars, right? If you take any scalar and you multiply by one, you just get that same scalar back, right? Three times one is three, four times one is four, and so on. The same idea holds with the identity matrix. Any matrix times the identity matrix should be itself. So we can run a quick example with the two by two case, right? Let's just make sure that we do get the same matrix out. Let's say A, B, C, D times 1, 0, 0, 1. If we run this multiplication, we do first row dotted with the first column, that's A. First row dotted with the second column, B, C, D, if you solve it out. So if you do the math here, you can see that we do get the same matrix out. Okay. And the significance of the identity matrix is kind of this. Right? We want to find some A inverse such that A inverse times A times X equals X, right? 
Okay. Another way of saying this is that A inverse times A is going to be the identity matrix. Cool. So we say that a matrix has an inverse if its rows and columns are all linearly independent from each other. So for example, if we look at a matrix, 5, 2, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, we can argue that this matrix does not have an inverse because the first the first row is equal to the second row plus the third row. First row equals second row plus the third row. And this means that there's a linear combination of rows that is equal to one of the other rows, right? So this matrix, we say, does not have an inverse. Similarly, even if we change this matrix slightly, say made the second row 1, 1 half, and 0. This matrix would still not have an inverse because we can do the second row times plus 2 times the third row to get us the first row, right? 3, 1, 0, plus 2 times 1, 1 half, 0 will give us 5, 2, 0. Okay, so a linear combination is any series of sort of additions and scalar multiplications. So if there are some additions and scalar multiplications that can get us to one of the other rows, then our rows are not linearly independent. Okay, so our conditions for it being invertible, a matrix is if its rows are linearly independent and its columns are linearly independent from each other. And so we're not going to go into exactly why, but we can say that the only invertible matrices are those that are square. So only square matrices are invertible. Okay, so let's say we have a matrix and we know that it's invertible. We've checked that all the rows are linearly independent. Um, we want to figure out how do we actually compute the inverse? So I'll show you guys kind of a quick trick um, that gets the job done, but you should kind of think about on your own like why it actually works. So let's say we have the matrix um, 3, 1, 2, 1. Um, we're going to write out the identity matrix on kind of the other half here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try sort of linear combinations of rows in this matrix until we can get it to look like the identity matrix. And as we're doing that, we're going to repeat the same operation on, on this half. And at the end, when this guy looks like the identity, um, whatever is over here on the second half will be the inverse. So to kind of show you what I mean, uh, you can notice that if we add negative 1 times the second row to the first row, we'll get the row 1, 0, right? It's going to be negative 2 plus 3, which is 1, and then negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, right? So our goal is to make this first row here look like this first row here. And if we add negative 1 times the second row here to the first row, then we're going to get out 1, 0, right? So we're going to do that operation on sort of both halves of the matrix, OK? So over here, we're going to add this negative 1 times the second row to the first row. And over here, we're going to add negative 1 times the second row to the first row, OK? So here we get 1, 0. And if we do negative 1 times the second row here, we're going to get, and add that to the first row, we're going to get 1, negative 1. And so we still have our bottom row unchanged. Cool. And now, if we want to get uh, the second row down here to look like this second row over here, uh, we need to think about kind of what operation we can do. So you can see that if you add negative 2 times this row to this row, we're going to get something that looks like this row, which is good. That's what we want. Right? Negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0. And negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. So we're going to apply that operation on both sides of the matrix again. So negative 1 times negative 2 times the first row plus the second row, 0. Again, here we get 1, 1, 0. And sort of the more important part is repeating that on the other side of the matrix. So negative 2, we have this first row, negative 2 times this plus this, right? So we can see that's going to be negative 2 
times z plus negative 2 plus 0, or negative 2. And then negative 2 times negative 1, or 1, plus 1, which is 3. Okay? And so we hope that this is our inverse matrix. Okay? And let's sort of do the multiplication out to double check that we got the right answer. So what we want to see is, is 3, 1, 2, 1, times this new matrix going to be our inverse? Right? So times 1, negative 1, negative 2, 3. So what we want is to get out the identity matrix if we perform this multiplication. And so let's see if that actually works. So again, it's first row times first column times first column. And so that's going to be 3 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2, or 1. OK? Then first row times second column. 3 times negative 1 plus 1 times 3 is going to be 0, right? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2 is 0 again. And then 2 times negative 1, negative 2, plus 1 times 3, which is 3, or negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Okay? So as you can see here, when we multiply these two matrices, we get out the identity, which tells us that they are each other's inverses. So if we want to do an if we want to undo a multiplication by 3 1 2 1 we simply multiply again by 1 -1 -2 -3